Found myself in band. Test control, you are in band and go for break release. Time to go for break release. See the 238 there, it'll follow in what's called an interval takeoff. We expect about a 10 second delay. The T-38 will follow XB-1 off the runway and then they'll rejoin in the air. Here we go. Boy, it just never gets old to watch this. I feel Absolutely. like there's, there's nothing, nothing quite so human as flying. Just gathering speed, going down the runway. You see rotation about 165, and we're airborne about 195 or so was the, the speed I saw. Oh, what a beautiful sound that, and beautiful view. That never gets old. It never, ever gets old. Just an absolutely beautiful airplane. Uh, physics does not let you make an ugly supersonic jet, not by any stretch, and XB-1 is just a beautiful machine. So, Nick, uh, what's going on now? Okay, so uh, we just saw XB-1 leave the ground, um, and XB-1 turned right. It's heading out to the east, and we're going to fly up east uh, in, and enter the uh, airspace above Edwards Air Force Base. And then we're going to fly out about 60 miles or so to the east. We'll turn west and enter again the same piece of airspace we were in on our last flight. Uh, we call it the Bell X-1 Supersonic Corridor. It's named after, of course, Chuck Yeager and his famous flight uh, conducted in 1947, which was the first ever supersonic uh, flight of any uh, manned aircraft. Uh, so we're using that airspace because that is the, the appropriate place to do supersonic testing. And we have a special uh, air, uh, 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 agreement with the Federal Aviation that gives us the authority to do that uh, with our test mission here today. So here yeah. we go. We are, it uh, uh, looks like the afterburners are lit um, and uh, we are accelerating. And so, all right, it's time to get excited. Here we go. And point nine set, this is where it paused last time. That's expected uh, because of the uh, error in the air data system once we get. Uh, once we get deep into the supersonic regime, we should see, yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. And XB-1 is supersonic now for the fourth time. Mach now, point one six. Now, one. Uh, what speed are we expecting Geppetto to accelerate to today, Nick? Okay, so we're, we're targeting a true Mach number of 1.14 on this dash. Now, we learned on our first supersonic mission that the air data system does have a little bit of error in it. You know, any uh, pressure transducer, any piece of instrumentation will have a little bit of error in it. Um, and so we're compensating for that. And uh, we're going to fly a little bit faster because of that error. So you might see an indicated Mach number of 1.14. 1.14 to 1.19 or so, and we're dynamically adjusting seconds. that so that we're at 1.14 true. Beautiful. And then we are. That is a new top speed for XB1 right there, right now, and on today's flight. Just heard a 30 seconds call. Slow down, slow down, recover. Maybe gotten a little fast there, but we're, we're still supersonic. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Mark. Okay, so there you have it. That was the first Schlieren pass. Recover. We do not have TM. Okay, lost some TM. Trades, they need you to recover. They drop out. Uh, throttles are out of burner. I'm recovering. Copy that. All right, so let's explain what just happened there. You see the data had froze on the bottom of the screen. We've just lost our telemetry link with XP-1, so I'm sure the avionics team is diving into that right now and uh, just come looking for a fix. But we did get one Schlieren pass on that. Uh, Geppetto will probably circle. And we've also spaced these uh, Schlieren shots 10 minutes apart to deal with contingencies. And also the team on the ground, their, their camera systems, uh, they record a very high frame rate and they make these massive data files. It takes them about five or six minutes just to offload them and reset the equipment for the next pass. Yep, so when we're getting ready to go supersonic, uh, what we'll see, there we go, the, uh, the uh, all three afterburners are now on and uh, we w uh, should expect to see the Mach meter start ticking up here. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Speed is increasing. Yeah, you know, so a supersonic flight is exciting. Um, you know, one, one question people ask me a lot is, is it, what is it like on board the airplane when the airplane breaks the speed of sound? Nick, what is it like? I hear it's 
transparent. Uh, it, it, there's really no sensation to the people in the airplane when it goes supersonic, like like this moment right here that Geppetto is just about to experience. Yep, they should click over any moment now. There we go. There we go. Once again, XP-1 is supersonic. Fifth time. Fifth time. <laughs> Seems like it works. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, Concord famously had a big readout in the cabin because uh, nobody could tell. But it was pretty cool to know that you're going supersonic. But yeah. you can't tell from uh, from being inside the airplane. Yeah, you know, we, we will do that in Overture 2. We'll make sure you have a big display on the speed and that that moment of breaking the sound barrier is celebrated. But but it really is, uh, you have something you have to go make a make a big deal out of it because otherwise nobody would nobody would notice this completely transparent. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Geppetto has decelerated again. I see the engines are at about 80% or right now. And uh, after that dash, we were turning to the right. It looks like Geppetto might be circling to regroup for position. I was also quite sure we might have lost telemetry on that one again. So, uh, unfortunate, but uh, these, are, these are the things that come up when you're flight testing an aircraft, is sometimes telemetry doesn't play very well. We could have designed a drone, and that probably would have been a lot cheaper and a lot faster, but we just wouldn't have learned as much. Yeah, yeah. in XP-1, in many ways, we made the job hard. Uh, we made it hard to do it human piloted, not as a drone. That means failure is not an option. You have to bring the airplane and the pilot home. We did not put an ejection seat in the airplane, again, for that same reason. We did not want to give ourselves a get-out-of-jail-free. We wanted to build the safety technology and the safety culture that would make overture possible. All right, well, it looks like that Mach number is creeping back up again. Accelerating three afterburners. Here we go. There we go. The sixth time uh, XB-1 is supersonic again. And on this mission, we're a little bit higher, but just because of the, the later uh, time in the day, we're compensating for the sun changing position. A little bit higher, and we're going a little bit faster. We're going to target 1.15. Where we're fighting through some telemetry issues, and so that's what you're hearing there in the comms, is uh, the data has frozen. That just means that the radio link between the ground and the air is unfortunately just, just not behaving very well today. Yeah, and so when we don't have the telemetry data, uh, we tend to back off on test conditions a little bit. Again, because the entire point there is that we've got a, a couple dozen engineers able to watch their displays in real time, monitor thousands of parameters, and make sure that uh, everything on the airplane is, is performing exactly as we expect it to. That's right. You know, one of the things that we did on our first supersonic uh, flight... Approaching. I'm 10 seconds out, subsonic. No uh, need for a shot here. Uh, we are done for the day. Copy that. So Happy fuel state, we had a concurs. pre... We're still in the dark as you're heading back. Yeah, we had a a, a, a level, uh, basically we call it uh, bingo, and that's when we have exhausted the fuel for uh, our plan testing Control. for the given day. And mm -hmm. so we're at that point right now where we can come back, and there's still some uh, some some test points we can do on the way home, um, but we don't have the, the fuel anymore to do another Schlaren pass.